Welcome back to Gears 5. Hey, and Kate! We're all JD's done dead. And... Welcome hey, back hey, to hey, Gears 5. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right, JD's dead. I forgot about this that. This is the ghost of Dominic Santiago. I didn't want company. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got it now. So, <laughs> so, yeah, JD's dead. Now let's see how our characters react to it. Well, they're crying. Oh no 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 no! Maybe no, 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 no. she's evil. Oh no! I'm, I don't have an issue with the way they react to this. They they react appropriately. The problem is that again, it, it, one of the more one of the more sad. I don't mean that in a good way. One of the more sad things to have when you're watching a work of fiction is when you have a scene that's clearly meant to be emotional, and yet you're just sitting there and completely unable to give a crap. That's when you uh, like uh, it, it's just it's it, 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 it's the kind of thing that just makes you shake your head. In this Not appointment. Only that this may be the most emotional I've seen these characters, and of course it takes the death of another character to get it to actually also, shine through. Also, not that I'm not not that I'm against that, but uh, okay, I'm not an expert in fashion, but Kate has three piercings in her ear, and the way they're placed, like it doesn't look. Uh, I don't know. I, don't, okay, I, I, I wanted to save it for the final thoughts, but might as well talk about it. Uh, um, okay, to be fair, this design in Parkour Query was also in Gears 4, so it's something that in universe it's something like, you know, she was, she decided to use this kind of style from the village. A lot of people seem to have criticized Kate's uh, hairdo, defining it as a quote unquote, too hipster. Well, yeah, Hold it on. blocks part of her eyes. I never even heard of that. Yeah, that's, that's, that, really. that makes her a hot goth girlfriend. Okay, that, that, that's going through the other direction. What what I was arriving to is that, honestly, I've seen, I, I, like, I've seen other haircuts that are done in modern times that I really normally cannot stand. This is clearly not one of them. It's perfectly fine, to be honest, for me. Honestly, I don't even mind the haircut. I'm more, I, I'm more uh, weirded out by the placement of the piercings in the ear. Like they don't look like. Uh... Oh, the, believe me, Pedro. My sister showed me that you can put piercing at any point. Oh in no, the I, ear. I don't, no, that's far and fair, and and yeah, she should be dead at this point. <laughs> like anyway, and, and anyway, in regard to her hair, though, know, the hair is too free. It could end up blocking part of her eyes, which is not necessarily good for combat. Maybe for aiming better. I don't know. Then well, again, going, aiming randomly before then, without then again, it gives you tunnel vision, so... Mm. I, love how, I love how Kate literally just had the rubble fall on her, and she just gets up like nothing happened. Isn't she part locust? No, uh, okay, she, she can aside, from that, uh, aside from that, uh, uh, the, uh, the, ideally the cog armor should allow you to resist uh, that kind of impact uh, because you know it's something it wasn't something like a debris penetrated you know her body or something so it was more, something more pressing onto her and seems only in a superficial way again it was mostly the fact that she was stuck and she was having a panic attack out of the claustrophobia which is understandable sure sure but uh, um, it's more so the fact that it's, it's also the fact that something that is connected to the previous game that we didn't I mean, talk I mean, about. We've it, seen, so. we've, we've seen this, we've seen the armor survive these kinds of things. Before. Oh no 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 no! That's oh, not what I'm saying. I was about to talking something uh, something else, but I think it connects well with what Pedro was raising. Um, for the first trilogy, and to an extent, and technically speaking, also Judgment, obviously. I do at least for me there is a suspension of disbelief when it comes to the exhaustion and the, the marathon that the character can go through, Marcus and the Baird and the others, because they're literally trained soldiers. They've been trained for years to do this. For the new team, uh, I can see maybe JD doing this, but both Dell and uh, Kate uh, have not technically been military training well, or military to, training. Hold to on, be fair, to I'm, see it, though. Hold on, I'm getting through this. Uh, hold on, Pedro. on, hold on, hold on, let him speak. Um, they haven't gone through extensive military yeah. training, so I, I, the one thing that I'm questioning is how they managed to keep going uh, despite everything going up against him with, uh, you know, the kind of stamina they would have. I don't think it's that big of a problem, but it is something that I think a line or two could have fixed. Sure. I don't know. It's more so, but that's well, a detail, I, mean, I was trying I to mean, say. The, uh, I mean, they're in the, I mean, the, the cogs, so... Um... 
But odds are they had they had at least some amount of training. Oh, that's the thing. Uh, to Dell was in the car with JD before the events of Gears Four. That's the thing. That's that is right. Oh, the, again, Kate was only raised in the, the village of her mother. Yeah. And only recently she had. Then again, there is that time skip too. Uh, oh, that's yeah, well, if I remember correctly. Well, if I remember correctly. There's only been a couple months in between Kate's games, wasn't it? Yeah, it, go, I think it has been. Hey, hey, you That's never know how much you can learn in a couple of months. We've heard, from what we've heard, apparently Kate is like the top of the notch, or the one that Marcus has the most uh, 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 feelings that she's again, going true, somewhere. They, here they also there. went through missions together between 4 and 5, so I guess. But again, again, it still doesn't really... I explained that much for Gears 4 itself. Like, I do get it, uh, you know, the urgency of the situation and the personal stakes might give you the adrenaline rush that might you keep going for a long while than uh, one would expect uh, for this kind of situation. But again, without proper training, at some point your body will give up. Jabba just reminded me of something, by the way. Uh, Not that... only that... Go ahead. Not only that, but Kate has arguably had the least reason to be this big on stuff. And, and Phoenix is also raising an objection on this as well. There's a contradiction. <laughs> it's, 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 it's Maya. And, Mia. Anyway, yeah. as I was saying, like, well, Kate arguably has the least reason to be the most skilled from what you guys have mentioned. Like, well, I mean, she's technically been in the cog the least, yet. From what it feels like, it feels like she's apparently on top of stuff the most. Granted, maybe she had some super duper extra awesome chocolatey special training in those few months. But we weren't shown or hinted at it. Also, I no. guess being yeah. the granddaughter of Mira means that she also has some minor, minor superior genetics. Uh, to That's the thing, Tail. That's the thing, Tail. The game, okay, maybe the comics do, but the games themselves never properly explain what makes both Mira. Re sorry. What makes Mira, Reyna, and... Okay, okay, okay. Reyna was, of course, experimented upon. We know that, Mira. But yeah. we're assuming that, okay, even if Reyna and, by extension, Kate, have inherited Mira's abilities, the the games never flat out explain what exactly makes Kate more, more physically capable than your typical human. Not really. Like, uh, okay, that you can... True. The games seem to have shown only... A capacity of uh, you know of, of psychological mental capacity. But anyway, so... Jova reminded me of something. Okay, for the sake of argument, let's say that JD's death is the canon one. Let's just uh... say that. Let's just say that. Now, now you see, now I can probably explain why I'm bothered by that comic that takes place in between four and five so much. So basically, if we take JD's death as the canon one, JD's character amounts to. I, he has daddy issues. Then the dad is unusually, like, like, un, like over, like uh, uh, exaggerates more, like, ex more like exaggerates in his hostility towards him. And they never really make up. And that's basically it. And whatever character arc duty was supposed to have was sloppily, it was sloppily handled. And it doesn't even, uh, it, it, we're not even allowed to enjoy that that all that much because he dies uh, shortly after. Uh, it's just one of those cases where. If you take JD's death as the canon one, JD is a very, ended up as a very, very poorly disserviced character. Okay, like, I, g no, I guess, I guess it, it, it answered just the question that I'm about to ask, but I think that the coalition never really stated which death is the canonical one. Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 they wait. never said it. Wait, wait, Sorry. wait, hold on. Now, before you ask it, what time are you guys at? Uh, 8.54.55. Um, Alright, I'm at 9.09. 9.09? No. Okay. Oh, don't worry, nothing's going on. Okay, uh, hold it's on. Shooting, shooting, hold on, Jova, and uh, click. There you go. Uh, no, go. as far as I'm aware, too, by all means, uh, the coalition did not state. I'm pretty sure it's one of those cases where you're meant to have your own. Uh, I'm guessing they're going the Mass Effect route, and Gear 6 is going to detect Again, your Gear 5 save file. That is what I speculated uh, in the previous part. Uh. But, what? Like I mentioned, though, it feels dumb to kill either JD or Dell at this point. Because, again, if you kill Dell, well... He just turns out the, the Black best friend, like Jova said in the last part. Like, seriously, if you kill Dell, it's even worse because Dell ends up becoming a complete nothing character. He had no arc, he had 
barely anything to do with anything. He was just along for the ride, really, when you get right down to it. Like, okay, I'm not gonna say that it would have been good writing, but honestly, it feels like the story was setting up for Foz to be the sacrifice, you know? Obviously, the character who can afford to be a one-off, but then he finally shows his worth and willing to sacrifice himself by, well, sacrificing himself to slow down Reyna, but no, he is... He's absent from the scene. It's either, again, it's either JD or Dell, and like, were they? It feels like, a, like I said, it feels like a desperate attempt to either make us really see how cool and awesome our new villain is, or in a desperate attempt to make it feel like cheap oh, drama. Oh, this story is, yeah, cheap drama, basically. And I, I mean, uh, to be honest, girl less. To be honest, though, um, I see this kind of example happen so often. I think the lines between the two, at least for me, are starting to blur a little bit. It's called. Oh, never mind. There you go. All right. So, okay. To the to the credit, I do in, I do I do enjoy Marcus's reaction. There you go. I mean, you think? I mean, it, it's the minimal to ask for him to have, a, you know, this kind of reaction. Oh no! To, sure. Uh, oh sure. Done. Sure. 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 Hmm. I'm a Sorry, Marcus. Oh God, I'm a terrible father. No, I'm, I, I wouldn't go as far to say that that he's terrible, but I I think he could have been better based on what we've seen. God damn it, James! It also helps that John DiMaggio is always awesome, so he at the very least does yeah, his best John to elevate. Yeah, John, yeah, the, uh, John DiMaggio yeah. plays oh, yeah. Marcus. John yeah. DiMaggio is the guy who plays Marcus. But yeah, I want to like this scene because it is definitely well acted. But like I yeah, no. said, the game doesn't, the game doesn't earn so it. It's so incomplete. Yeah. That I, I just. I can't. Again, this game. Oh, oh, oh and, and guess who also. Time fast. Okay. You know what's interesting? I love this one here. I'll help. Um... Oh, even the robot he said. <laughs> See, it's just like I said in Final Fantasy VII Remake. The important, again, the idea when a character understands that she gets real, removing sunglasses that he has. Again, even for a plot that is clearly not on the same level like this, they at least understood this kind of thing. Oh, sure. Um, I think. Uh, you know what's interesting? You know what's interesting? Yeah, yeah, see, two reminds me of Barrett to you. I said you that what, earlier. You, you know what's interesting, too, since you brought it up? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, that reaction from Foss makes sense because uh, we established that during Act f 2 he, they, he became body -body. they became body-body. They became body-body. I wish we, I, we could have seen that, but I've already written enough about that. But, but so, but, but, okay, but, but assuming that the story, assuming that the story works, that reaction makes sense for Foss to have. He, now, j now, now, let's wait to see what Foss's reaction when Vel dies uh, oh in, the, in the next part. Go ahead, Jova. Jova. Jova, you had something to say? I guess, guess not. But uh, uh, in, the meantime, yeah. in the meantime, Dej, oh shit. Uh, in the meantime, Dej, that's the thing, I forgot to say in one of the previous parts. As much as, uh, you know, I can understand what the character arc of Pad is supposed to be, I, I, what I said in the Family 7 comment, your main commentary <laughs> makes sense for. Oh, sorry. Go on, Jova. Oh, you can hear me now, good. What I was trying to say is like, well, the problem with this scene is like, well, these are arguably good scenes, but what they're reacting to was so terribly executed that mm -hmm. it's hard for me to really consider, are they really good scenes? Like, again, these scenes aren't in a vacuum, okay? Yeah, good scenes in a vacuum Wait, that the game doesn't... So. think that they wrote that scene first, and then wrote the rest of the plot revolving around it, and then... But again, let me help you, Jova. the question, for what purpose? Uh, let me, uh, allow, again, me, allow me to help you, Jova. Uh, what you're looking for, Jove, is good scenes in a vacuum that the game doesn't earn. There you go. Not only, not only that, but again, if JD's character arc had at least been, you know, properly fleshed out, done better, and, you know, God forbid, completed, I actually wouldn't mind this death. Yes. It's war is hell. You can lose even the most important people. And I get that that can happen in real life. But JD's death feels so pathetic. Like, again, the meta sense that it was essentially a desperate attempt to get us to take a new villain seriously kind of ruins any mood towards it. Yes, 
the, it is well acted, but by God, when you get down to it, he died like a chump. And it honestly <laughs> can make some people laugh at that. Honestly, I was just kind of rolling my eyes and eh, whatever. At this I, point, I, at this yeah, point, I was feels... just kind of done, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like, look, look, look. I, I, I know I messed up and said that JD was not that interesting a protagonist. But death was not the answer. No, it wasn't. And you know, like you said, it shows, that, a, it, it shows it shows a very bizarre side of confidence in the writing that it feels more unnecessary than anything. And yeah. guess what? From what I've heard, most people weren't really satisfied by JD's death. Like, sure, maybe people weren't as upset, but it didn't really it didn't really get anyone to say, "Oh my God, Gears of War is now amazing again." Like, if anything, it just got people to give less faith in the writing. Because when you resort to desperate attempts like this, you more or less have admitted that you are pretty much down to that level. It, 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 again, like I said, this is why, again, uh, to reference our other commentary we're doing right now, the Angry Girls, this is why I praise Lucy Maud Montgomery so much, because every single time something dr big dramatic happens in that book, it's it comes from a very strong build-up that was entirely made specifically for the purpose of making that payoff all the more satisfying. That's how you tell a freaking story. These guys just yeah. want to have their cake and, and not actually bother to put in all the ingredients in that cake to make it good. Like, you know, for a comparison's sake, I've been constantly calling that Matthew is probably going to die for some dramatic reason or whatnot. But for my guy, with this little... In case, you're hold not on. See, in case you're not seeing what we're referencing, uh, it's about the 1979 anime version of Animal Green Gables. You'll soon see it. That it's being, coming. It's coming soon. Well, people might said, not even be my, interested in watching that in only this, Pedro. Oh, okay, but sure, sure. Anyway, so, so, sorry, anyway, audience. my point is like, well, for as likely... Even if he were to die at the point that we are in the show, which is close to 20 episodes, even with as little as he's spoken, his death would actually leave more of an impact on me, because I have seen the impact he has on Anima Rilla's lives, like some of the main characters or whatnot. Basically, well, you know what? Let's go even further here. Adam. Technically, game-wise, we only got to see Adam really in Gears 3. Yep. Yet his sacrifice, even for as little screen time as he had, was powerful because it had a massive impact on the war. It helped win the war. And an impact God, on Marcus. The, the stuff that was put into it. Like, it. And it was shocking. He was supposed to be our end goal to rescue in that game, technically. But no, he ended up being the martyr. Not but to the mention Jova. In the end, won the day. Not to mention Jova. Gears Free story literally starts with Marcus having a nightmare about how he was unable to save him, and he was kidnapped by the Locust because, like, he, he tried to dis he disobeyed orders to try to save his father, and not only did he fail because of his disobedience, he got arrested, and that's why he's in that jail in the beginning of the first game. So by the yeah. so when he finally manages to get to him and and hopefully in this time save him. He has to see him die right in front of him, like the, the like it, again. It's it's not much, but it's so well handled just on the ver on the short spend that they do because they do a good job in creating the proper context. Well, combined with the fact I that think I touch dies. Com com combined with the fact that uh, Marcus is a uh, is a character that we like. Uh, there you go. Um, like uh, it's not so much it's not so much that we're devastated over. Adam, maybe possibly, but it's more so for Marcus that that moment because uh, because the, the fact that Marcus has to went through all this trouble and he has to once again fail to save his father and this time for good. Like uh, it's more so Marcus's uh, tragedy rather than Adam's tragedy. Although Adam, of course, is also really good, especially if you've read the comics, where which offers more character for him. Mind you, his <sighs> death was a, was at least something that led to a sign of hope. With his death. As far as we know, the Phoenix lineage is now dead. Gonzo. And you know this will probably just be a cheap hey, excuse you're to saying, have wait, this, Marcus wait. adopt uh, Kate as the new Phoenix so that it can be Kate. <sighs> Kate. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So, Joe, does Marcus have a sister? No. No. As far as no. we know, no. He can't continue the Marcus. Phoenix bloodline like that. Marcus is an only son, but, he, but Dom was his, his uh, brother in arms. 
it's also Dom, 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 that, by the Dom, way. Dom, Dom. Also, yeah. Pedro, again, as much as I would love for people to watch every single of our videos, there might be stuff that they might not be interested oh, sure, in. Sure, 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 I already apologized. But, uh, so. but, to, but no, it's, it's, not, it's not even a big deal. But uh, to instead uh, to continue what I was saying to Deji before, that's the thing, Dej. Like I said, as much as I'm, I can understand a bit more what Faza has been going through, um, I wouldn't say the same thing, but I say to, towards Barrett or Final Fantasy VII Remake that, it, that he's so Mr. T that they want, to, they want me to tag him bad and tell me not to do drugs. But yeah, when you get uh, right down to it... He looks more like Wesley Snipes than Mr. T in the remake. But yeah, when you get mm. right down to it, the whole choose your dead partner scene from... Uh, like, it just fails on either front. It, it Nobody wins from this. This was just a bad decision. There was no need for am this. I, and there is no I precedent you? on that front either. Like, it's, if it was something I say, oh, um, a common thing that the franchise has been doing, but the closest we get in terms of that kind of choosing was the path to choose in some kind of level, which is minimal and not that much relevant anyway. Which no. is something that I just realized the new games don't even have. <laughs> like, no. God damn. Oh, Pedro, hey Pedro. Yes. I'm not gonna spoil how it goes, but based off of what we see when we do see what happens if you let Dell die, I kind of get the feeling that the game does expect you to let JD die, because Dell's death is... Well, well, here's the thing, Joe, when you get right down to it, the differences are mostly cosmetic. Uh, I mean, um, there's, a, 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 there's a difference between... There's a, dif there's a difference from Marcus, of course, obviously. But uh, for the most part, the story just kind of goes the same route. It's just some minor changes, really. It doesn't matter much in the grand scheme of things. Well, that's sort of why I get the feeling that they expected for the Jeff, for the Jeff to be JD, because, again... Uh, much as I hate to say it, Dell hasn't given nearly as much an impact to the audience as JD has. And, and really, that would, you expect the, would you expect the coalition to go probably to go through um, and claim that the canonical death, basically, of the, of the new cast is the only one black guy? Yeah. yeah, like, again, I really do get the thing that it was supposed to be JD's death, but then somebody well, said... Well, what if people really hate that one? Then they went, okay, well, then Dao can be the guy who. Yay! Cole! Ah, Cole, I need something. See, again, enjoyed. this is what this is what reinforces my kind of theory. Again, Marcus, Cole, and Bear seems to be more in character. So it's not even a matter of fact that Tom B. So forgot what the banter is supposed to be. Um, nor he, like, he, more of a case that he voluntarily decided to. Distance, distance of the new cast from the old one on this kind of aspect. Mm. Oh shit! And there you go. It's still oh, alive. Oh, and you're it's still alive. Yes. Um, it's um, it's a bit yeah, yeah. That's the Fendwebs. This is yeah, our. This is a, that's the Fendwebs. This is our designated final boss. Oh. Yep. This is our final boss. Not you know Reina herself who just killed. Well, to be fair, Java. I was already expecting them to save her for the end of Gear 6, anyway. Oh, no! No. Okay, okay, Pedro, yes, I get that too, but honestly... It's fine. Oh, wait, hold Also, that's not roar effect. I'm, ju I'm, I'm going to do your favor right now, Dwebs. No, the, ga the, the, game, the game is only trying to make you think that he's dead. Fortunately, they don't. And I'm uh, I'm not even kidding you right now. The first time I play for this part, oh my god, you better if you if these guys kill Cole, I am so gonna I swear to that one mm. Because remember Cole's my favorite. Like, <laughs> so. Not just that, he only appears at the beginning and at the end of the game, so like it again would have been a big move. It, it, it would have been so oh, yeah, horribly have manipulative on their have, have one of the fan favorite characters, let alone the black guy, barely show up only to die. But yeah, to answer to answer you from earlier tale, that's the thing to remember. He that was no longer the only black guy of the group, but we have Foz now too. <laughs> but they're not a minority if there's multiple of them. He said it not me, on. by the way. <laughs> I always thought I, th I thought that boss was Indian. Is he? Yeah, no, I'm not really touching that. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, no. he does. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he has a British accent, so. 
Salt and pepper. Sorry, Pedro, to give you an idea how much people don't understand ethnicities these days, I mean, a lot of Americans, not not Americans, not you, Jova, obviously, but a lot of Americans who genuinely believe Italians are not white. So. Funny how you conveniently leave me out of that. How? What kind of logic would even arrive at that conclusion, really? Okay. I'll, anyway, I'll, anyway. But, yeah, that, that being said, again, I don't want to touch the subject with a ten foot. Go ahead, Jova. Re re regardless, though, back to my main point, though, it's just like, can you imagine, though, killing off Cole after already having a controversial death, like, either way? And again, here's the thing with the JD and Del thing, it was damned if you do, damned if you don't with either option, like, and they put themselves into this corner. It's like, why would you do it? Like, I get trying to challenge yourselves as writers, but when you're already walking Hold on, Joe, I need to explain this. Death, there you go, see? Did you notice? I could. I, I had to wait for the game to let me climb the stairs because <laughs> the story was still moving uh, on in the background. Okay, Clayton specifically, yes. Yes, still alive so far. That's the thing that uh, Job. I get the feeling the new running gag is that this Carmina is immortal. That's the new. That's well, the. It's the reverse of the of the old joke. That's actually a, that's actually, that's actually a good idea. That's actually a good idea to be fair. And if there's one Carmina that I would definitely want to go with that joke is definitely Clayton. Go ahead. Well, remember, Pedro, we already had a Carmine die in this game, too. <sighs> niece. God. Yeah, I didn't like that either, but uh, go ahead. What, the whole having the niece die? No, not really. I feel like we could have done something more of her, to be honest with you. True, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know... She's the, especially because she's I mean, the first female Carmine that's been prominent in any of the games. Maybe the maybe maybe the comics have more of them, but no, this I can tell you I can tell you that that uh, aside from the main games, the side material is not really okay. No, there is <clears throat> the the first canonical Carmine showcase during the Pendulum War, correctly, and that's the one that later on gets killed by Ram. But that's literally it. It's like the the the, the patriarch patriarch. Yeah, considering that. Liz, considering Liz is the first female Carmine that's actually showed up uh, and everything and even been in the I actually think we could have done so much better with her instead of just her just being there to die. Much like the, the Carmine 04. Oh god. Okay, I was do argue that Gears 4 handled the whole Carmine yes. the worst, but yeah, well, remember, I deny well, that well, Gears well, remember, Joe, 5 uh, kind of dropped the ball with that too. Like, at least give her more to do. That's the thing, Joe. Remember, like I've said in our Gears 4 Shit. commentary, I didn't even realize what was going on regarding Carmine in 4 because they they mostly they mostly they kind of kill him kind of off screen kind of it's just like i couldn't even like like i, I couldn't even tell that that it was who was carmine specifically in that scene like it was just so confusingly put together Again, anyway, anyway go ahead anyway if i may part of why i'm not too big on this being the final boss of this game is like well one we already dealt with this guy technically so having him be the final boss without anything really different about him feels kind of lame like imagine if the worm in gears 2 suddenly showed that it survived then that was the fun of boss of gears 2. boy jova i hate to tell you what the first prototype has in store that would be incredibly stupid jova considering we literally killed all of its hearts <laughs> so you do, you, uh, yeah, you're recording I... prototypes uh, the, the the video game the prototype between yeah. um, Square yeah. Fantasies. Yeah. So, let, let me it, guess. Again, let me guess. It, it, it repeats the use. No, of it, the it, it basically boss has the, the same final. structure. You have a mid game boss, but you then think it's dead, only popping up at the very end, and it's supposed to be a big conflict for the for being the final boss. Um, but but then again, prototype was done in 2009, and it was a very ambitious project on its own. So it seems to be more of a common thing uh, in a couple of video games, but. Being it's you know it's more final way and I, again I get the idea sometimes having um, like either a recurring menace or something that has been the mid game um, you know not antagonist but potentially uh, opposing force. Alright, this is actually one force. difference. So I'm at this is actually oh. one difference. So I might as well say okay. Railgun. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. If yes. Basically, uh, uh, every time one of the car one uh, you get warned, in, uh, you're supposed to use the ray gun to. Sh to shoot in, right into its mouth, and when it come, and when this happens, shoot its tonsils. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess if the real gun will, will, will chop a bit uh, of its horns. Uh, one don't by one. don't worry about ammo because uh, you have infinite piles of ammo here to get oh, ammo. Oh, not a backpack like in Quantum Break. Fuck. So disappointed. Oh, what is it? 
But yeah, but, uh, uh, here's... but no, I, I, I get the idea, but I do agree with Jova. Having this as the final boss or something that we have faced, you know, not too long ago. Again, or, or, like, again, for lack of, um, if you want to follow that, why not having a second match against the Matriarch, maybe in a new form? True, yeah, I mean, the Matriarch would have been a more interesting thing. And it's more that, thematic I could... with also Kate. That's the thing, too. How would a Matriarch get all the way from the North Pole to here? Well, yeah, we, we, we shot up the shot. She's very resistant when she's not encased by ice. You, you can pull some bullshit out of her up where Ashley says that she regenerated and then started stalking Kate based on her psychic trace or I something. Guess. It's not a, a dumb question. That, but... Wait, wait, hold on. A dumb question since it's relevant to a boss fight. Uh, in the game itself. If one of your teammates down and you can't revive them, is that an automatic re restart or no? Uh, basically, if you allow all your party members to die, uh, uh, you do lose, yes. Because it's part of how Gears is constructed, Edge. In the same way, like, for example, imagine you're playing the campaign the campaign on co-op, for example, because you can't play the campaign on co-op. If one, if your partner dies, you get that last checkpoint because, uh, you know, remember, the, char the characters are not supposed to die. So you're supposed to protect yourself and the characters, yes. Alright. This thing is but, relaxed. Yeah. Okay, okay, here's another thing. Though. How many tongues does this thing have? Yeah, seriously, again, yeah, despite, despite the comparison with, um, with uh, the Gravoids uh, from Tremors, uh, the Gravoids had a limited number of tongues we could use. This, this one just regenerates them. Go ahead, Joe. How fast, man. Here's another thing I have with this endgame here. So, Reyna, technically... Actually, as far as we know, Kate could have killed her right there and then if she had just thrown the knife at her chest. Like, what makes Reyna so special? Like, again, Myrna made sense. Myrna was someone who was a tactical genius. She, she knew not to get up all front there. Reyna just is uh, a corpse walking on tentacle legs here. I feel like with enough gears, she could easily be taken down or so, which is, I guess, part of why I feel like this final boss is lame because honestly it feels like we could have dealt with Reyna right there and then yep again 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 the the over the final act of this game act four overall it just feels like a desperate oh my oh crap we we, we have yet to actually do anything that actually is remotely impactful in this game uh let's do all the things let's kill an integral character Let's try and show our new villain. Let's have uh, oh, Alan Jova. Alan Jova. Final boss, no. Jack. Oh, snap. What Jack. Are you doing? Jack. Jack. No, Jack. No. no. He sacrificed it to become the beacon. Yes, he's gonna be. He's gonna be use. He's gonna use himself as the beacon oh, for the Ember of Dawn. He's I mean, he's a robot. You can reveal them. No, Jack. No. He's not the AI creature. No. Yeah. But that's. I'm, I'm not even kidding you. I'm not. I'm, I'm not even kidding you, Ted. This is the yeah, only. I mean, even, this is the best character sacrifice in the game, oh, to be honest with you. Kill it? It gets yes. killed in a cutscene? Really? Yes. Yeah. That's the thing. Okay, I'm not even kidding you, Jova. This sacred character death uh, actually oh. moved me more than, <laughs> than, than, than the previous one. <laughs> because Jack is actually awesome, uh, so. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I hate to God say speed. <laughs> like, I mean, I hate to say it, but Pedro's right. Arguably, the best sacrifice in this game is the one done by the lifeless robot. It's because. No, it's something because. We actually liked. Them. It's because it's because she remember it, it, it would be like if a star if free, if R two D two had something similar you know he's he's a character that's been so beloved oh, at this so point instead, so instead the, the kind of baiting that we got in episode nine regarding C three PO and his memories yeah uh, yeah going to Gears five well I was talking about more R two D two he's right well I mean R two D two C three PO of the course, robot helper gotta get the glasses <laughs> oh yeah. It's to hide my tears. Yeah, I, I get it. It's kind of like that. That first act so smarmy and uh, you know arrogant, but uh, he just wants to be. It's only because he's insecure or something. And that would be fine too if the game actually, you know, showed me that. Well, I haven't read the comics, Pedro. I'm just guessing based from what the game is showing me. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm just saying, well, you know. 
I, I think that's the kind of the issue, though. Why wasn't there more focus on Thaws that they wanted us to care about? To be honest, Jova, I was I, like, okay, I wasn't expecting, but I was wondering if the game would have pulled something similar to what the games like Advent Rising do, in a sense that you get to choose who, li uh, who lives and who dies between two people at the early in the game, but then the game kills the other person later on anyway, so who cares? <laughs> no, no, no. Call you son of a bitch. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's also another possibility of Gear Six. The person that you saved the die. Oh yeah, and Mark. Oh yeah, and and Faz and Del are now buddies. Apparently, despite despite them hating each other beforehand, but Wait. whatever. See, well, Kate, you, see you will united? never be a part of that. Uh, here, here, here. Now we're gonna get the tease for Gear Six. Okay. Let me guess. Let me guess, Kate. You're gonna call Master Chief and say that you have to finish the fight. Actually, that's uh, kind of what she you know, says. Yes, actually, are. too. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of. I thought that I thought they were gonna do a plot twist, and she just kills all of four, five of them right there. Why? Why? What is wrong? Well, this is when this when to stop this game so far. There you go. See. <laughs> Yeah, she. Yeah, she's coming. Uh, yeah, she's. But not if we find her first. So I'm get. So so here's my guess. My guess is Marcus and Kate are gonna partner up again in Gear Six, uh, together with Dell and Foz, and they're going to go straight into the lo the new Locust Lair, basically. That's well, my I'll guess. What happens, I guess. So I guess that's how the game ends. That's how the game ends. Yes. However, we'll not see, we'll not show the credits before Deji because that's for the next part. Because in the next part, we're going to see things. What will happen if Dell was the one that died? Oh no! Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya.